Hey, this is Rod from Ram City, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Samsung XP941 SSD into a desktop computer case with a ASRock Z97 Extreme 6 motherboard, which is one of the very few motherboards that will actually accept that drive, run it at full speed, and boot. So you'll need a good surface to work off and an anti static mat. I like these really big ones, it gives you plenty of space to work on. Uh, you'll also need an anti static wrist strap. And the reason we harp on about these things is because it's very important to protect your equipment from electrostatic discharge. If you want to learn more about electrostatic discharge, have a look at this video. You'll also need, of course, your Samsung XP941 SSD. This is the 512 gigabyte model that we'll be installing today. A Phillips screwdriver. I like to use my iFixit 54-bit driver kit for this kind of work because it has all the bits that I need. If you've got a Z97 Extreme 6 motherboard, you also will get this tiny little fastening screw, which allows you to attach your XP94 SSD to the motherboard and fasten it down so that it doesn't move around. Okay, so here's our um, M.2 socket on our motherboard, or actually that ASRock called the Ultra M.2 socket. You install the driver is pretty straightforward, just push it in at an angle, give it a bit of a wriggle and slowly lower it down as you wiggle it in. And you can see there that the drive doesn't actually sit flat. You will need to put your fastening screw into there. Okay, so that's the drive installed. And now we're going to run through the software procedure to install Windows on the computer. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is you won't be able to install Windows on your XP941 unless you do it from a USB drive. So in order to do that, we need to obtain an ISO file of a Windows 8.1 installation and put it on our USB drive. So if you have the retail version, then you can download one from this address. That's an ISO file. And that address there will just download a executable file and what you need to do is to save that to your hard drive. And then once that's saved, we'll then need to execute that and run it. And then this is where you put in your Windows product key. So note, this only works if you have the retail version. If you have the OEM version, then you won't be able to use that product key here and um, that's what we're going to show you how to do next. So I've got the OEM version on mine, so therefore downloading an ISO is an option for me. I'm going to have to make an ISO file from my existing OEM DVD. So we'll do that next. So to make an ISO file, we're going to use a program called Magic ISO, which is free to use. And just Google on Magic ISO, jump on their website and click the download button. And then just choose the appropriate download site, doesn't matter which one. And you see I've already downloaded that software to the machine and I've already actually installed it as well. So we'll just start up Magic ISO. And to get started, we just go to the tools menu and select make ISO from CD, DVD, ROM. And now you need to have a look at your output directory. Uh, before I actually name this, there's one thing you need to change, which is this universal image format. If you just change that to ISO, and then you can go ahead and give your ISO file a name. I'll just call mine Windows 8. And go ahead and save that. And then just leave that as Make CD Image in the option. And select the OK button. And away it goes. So we'll fast forward this process. And you can see it there on the directory. So that's what you're going to use in the next step. Right, so now that you've got your shiny new ISO file, we're going to need to burn that to our USB drive in a bootable format. So to do that, I like to use a program called Rufus. And once again, it's a piece of freeware that somebody's kindly made, does the job really well. So just Google on Rufus, R-U-F-U-S and select the latest download. You can see I've already downloaded it to my drive there. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. 
and it fires up pretty quickly. So the device layer will just you need to choose an eight gigabyte or even a four gigabyte USB drive. Just make sure it's okay to completely wipe it. Uh, the petition scheme I just left as default and I changed my file system to NTFS, uh, although I believe that FAT32 works for most people and just give it a Windows 8.1 volume label. And the next thing I need to do is select the ISO image and that's going to be the one that I just created from my DVD. And once you're ready to go, you just click the start button and heed the warning. And now we're done. So let's just have a look at our USB drive. Just click on the disk that's got the same volume label as the one you created. And you can see there that it's got all the necessary files for a Windows installation, as well as some extra boot files so that you can actually boot it in your machine. And the next step will be coming up very shortly. Okay, so if you've followed everything so far, you should have a bootable Windows installation on your USB drive and have that plugged into your USB port. So you boot up the machine, press F11 to get into the boot manager. And you'll see in there that there's a couple of options for booting from a USB drive. In my case, one starts with USB, the other starts with UEFI. And you should definitely choose the UEFI option and then press the enter key to get the installation started and that will get you into a UEFI installation of Windows on your XP941, which is exactly what you need. So this is the beginning of our Windows installation process. So just choose the appropriate language and your time and currency format. Same as what you would normally see on a DVD installation. Hit install now. And you'll need to put in your product key. Same as usual. Just we'll skip over that. And accept the license terms. And then select next. And you'll need to go with a custom installation. And you can see here that I've been playing around with my Windows XP 9 for one. So I've got some existing petitions from a previous installation. So I'm going to delete those first. And that will leave us with some shiny unallocated space, which we can install Windows onto. So we just select next. And the Windows installation process will kick off. It takes about five minutes on my machine. I'd expect something similar from most people. After the initial installation, you'll get a reboot. Just detecting the onboard devices now. We'll skip past the next section through to the next reboot. And now we're at the final part of the installation and we just need to put in a PC name. This all goes much quicker if you disconnect the machine from the internet. It's a tip for you. Put a username in without a password and you'll be able to enter straight in and then it'll boot straight into that username if you're just testing. And there we go, Windows installed. Okay, so that's your uh, installation of your operating system complete. If everything has worked out well, you'll be booting off your Samsung XP941 and grinning from ear to ear because it's going so fast for you. Um, thanks for watching the video and we'll catch you next time. Will that do? <laughs>